part two when chains break so i hope that a lot of you and your thinking and your ponderance have decided whether you are going through a season of slavery or a season of bondage now let's go back to those hands being bound in the symbolism of hands i'm going to start by articulating that all of the following things which we decree to be victorious in these areas when the chains break all of the following things can be found in the mystery, in the esoteric understanding of what a hand is, the symbolism, the metaphor, the actual physical meaning, the emotional, the interpretive, the religious, the socioeconomic, the physical understanding of a hand. Shame attributes or speaks to emotions. Pain, emotions. And it's, sickness speaks to health. Limitations speaks to physicality and also physically. Lack speaks to physicality, financial. Death speaks to spirituality and health. Fear speaks to emotion. Failure speaks to ability. And it's, progress to ability. Curse to spirituality. Disappointment, emotion. Rejection, emotion. Situational, circumstantial. Bad luck, circumstantial, spiritual emotional, divorce, marital, instability, physical, emotional, spiritual, mental. So all these areas can be found in the hand. So I did my homework and I was like, whoa, this hand is something. <laughs> I never really understood what a hand is. So we're going to we're going to diverge from the path of Christianity and we're going to do our homework in all the different vicinities that shape us as a culture, as a community, as a global community. It's a secular interpretation of what a hand is because a hand is a hand is a hand. So I just thought, let's take it from the top. Let's start with the uses of a hand. And I wrote them down. I don't want to miss anything because there's so many uses to a hand. What makes a hand special? It can be the love language of touch. You need to use your hands to touch, to touch a baby, to touch a premature baby. They say medically that if you touch a premature baby, it can bounce back to life. For defense, self-defense, my Taekwondo martial art people, Chibakera, a fist for defense, to play a musical instrument, to make music. When you say language of love, we're speaking about the hand in the arena of relationships. When we say defense, we're speaking about the hand in the arena of self-preservation. Playing a musical instrument, that's the hand. Once again, that same hand, but here it's existing in the arts and creativity, in entertainment. Shikanzi Futi, the hand is skillful in arts and crafts, in writing. Okay, so that's another arena, arts and crafts. In sign language, there the hand is being represented in the arena of communication. I think you're starting slowly to see the impact and the power and the meaning of a hand. The gesture of prayer, there that same hand is existing in the context of religion, of God, of our spiritual life. To gesture, to ask, to beseech for mercy, that same hand is existing in the field of finance. Or maybe it's emotional mercy you're asking for. Or maybe it's a form of communication to a deity or God or, or your spouse. There the hand is again. To shake hands, to say hello. Communication. An ability to bond. Bondability can be found in the context of the use of a hand. To write down our thoughts. Communication. To show directions. To navigate, to be able to move from one arena to the next. There again, we find the hand. And we oftentimes, like me, talk with our hands. So I've already identified several arenas, and I'm sure there's many others where the hand exists. Language of love, relationships, to pray, spirituality, direction, spirituality, defense, self-preservation. What happened during the coronavirus outbreak? The first thing, one of the first things that we became immediately aware of was our hands. How many times our hands come into contact with people, with objects, with things, and all of a sudden we were fear ridden because we understood the implication of spreading a disease via our hands. Wash your hand, wash your hand, wash your hand. What a wonderful time to be preaching a ceremony on hands. Wash your hands, don't touch people, don't touch surfaces, be careful what you touch. Wear gloves because your hand can transmit germs from surfaces to your mouth, to your nose 
to be ingested, to be inhaled. So this is the power and the significance of the use of the hand. And we're going to break it down. I want to take it step by step. So just in the mechanics of the hand, there's a whole universe that exists in just how we use our hands. And not having the use of our hands would be very problematic. It would hinder communication, gestures of communication, an inability perhaps to gain affinity for each other or to be understood. We wouldn't be able to clean our houses, wipe our asses, blow our noses, prepare dinner. We wouldn't be able perhaps to write and express our thoughts, play video games, call our boyfriend, text. There's so many things that this hand entails delivers there's so many gifts in so many arenas that this hand bestows and therefore our hand is not just a physical mechanical hand as you have seen yourself and i've proved it exists in the arenas of communication spirituality religion health care mentality physicality finances relationships defense well-being protection health I mean, it's a plethora of things, creativity, art, entertainment, pleasure, sensuality. Our hand exists in all those arenas. And therefore, when the hands are chained, transfer and translate the bondage and captivity to all the areas that we have articulated. That means you are being bound in areas of creativity. You are bound in the area of productivity. Of, of, of knitting jerseys, of making things, of making food, of selling. You are bound in communication. You've got communication breakdown with your community, with your boss. You can't communicate your desires and your thoughts. You can't even get a job. You can't, you can't ease the storm during a fight. These are all the areas that you are bound. So don't just think, oh, it's just my hands. It's your whole life. It's the whole arsenal of your existence. You can't even say hello when the devil, when the enemy binds you, he blocks your communication. Because through networking and communication and bonding with other people and affinity, that's how opportunities are being transferred opportunities and doors open through an ability to connect with individuals. When you're bound, when your hands are bound in these arenas, that is broken down. Sign language and ability to speak, to be understood, to be seen, even by those who do not hear. It can be a physical hearing. It can be a spiritual he hearing. It can be a metaphysical hearing. You've been incapacitated. The gesture, the inability to beg God for mercy, to beseech, to cry is probably for me one of the most frightening things. When you're in captivity, you lose the ability to beseech, to beg, to ask, to worship, to praise God. That is robbed from you. I think you're starting to see the gravity of your hands being in chains. You can no longer navigate or give direction to your own children. A parent who is bound does not have the ability to navigate their children correctly. When you are bound, when your hands are in chains, it affects the generations to come. It affects your children, the directions that you give them, the way that you lead them. You lack the ability to communicate wisdom. You lack respectability. You're not respected because a man in chains is indicative of a man who has sinned. It's a displacement of honor, integrity, and trustworthiness. People run away from a man in chains. They automatically assume that there's a reason that you're in bondage. We know biblically that oftentimes bondage is the work of the devil, but it can also be permitted by God to allow you to, to, to go through certain experiences and have certain lessons. So bondage, both bondage... In slavery and captivity can be God allowed, okay? It can be God allowed or it can be a direct uh, attack from the enemy. An ability to play musical instruments. You lack finesse, etiquette. You lack sophistication. You lack that je ne sais quoi. You are bound in chains. You cannot defend yourself as another big class. When you are in chains, you no longer have the ability to protect yourself. When the Bible says, put on your full armor of war, your hands are bound. You can't hold the shield of faith, the sword of the word of God. You lack the ability to metaphysically, spiritually, even physically depend, defend yourself. 
So what does that mean? That means you are rampant. You are wide open to abuse, attack, people robbing you, people stealing you, being disenfranchised, being disinherited from your vision and your dreams. These are just, this is just the tip of the iceberg of what it means for your hands to be in chains.